Everybody wants to use the pool at the same time. If you go in the middle of the afternoon, no problem, but that's unfortunately not when people want to go to the pool. They do want to go early in the morning or in the evenings, and that's when it's most crowded. So we do know just from that that we there is a need for more pool space in Bellingham. Councilor Borneman. Yeah, I'm glad to hear about, about the schools looking at that. Where I grew up in a town smaller than Bellingham, each of the high schools that had competitive, they had their own pools in the Great Lakes area in Michigan. The high schools provide the pools for the, for the teams. You know, I've never been able to figure out why the city is expected to pay for, uh, out of our general fund budgets, the recreation and competitive facilities for the school districts. They ha when they have their own bonding capacity to do that, and it only makes sense that they pick up some of that responsibility to pay for, for it. Because I know, I mean, Arnie Han is way overcrowded. And part of it has to do with you've got all the different swim teams. You Somewhere behind me. Okay. Okay. Um, anyway, there have been some requests made uh, tonight, uh, both to extend the, the uh, duration of the contract and also, or the permit, and also to fill up the um, empty units that they have there that aren't, they don't have people in them. And I think that our police chief and our planning director have been meeting uh, now almost daily um, with the staff there, with Doug and, and the other staff. And the, the goals that they put out for them were to get, um, a plan in place, including accountability for the future, and put them in touch with Maury Ingram from the uh, foundation so that they weren't, so they had some support in doing that. And, uh, and then when that's done, and I didn't know if the investigation was a part of the restriction on having people be able to move in but I was informed by the police chief that it was. So, okay. So for me, um, as we, th we think we're trying to make people safe, and that's one of our goal. So we, we want to make sure that, um, that we've completed our investigation before more people move in. Now, having said that, I'll let the chief and Rick, who have more um, intimate knowledge of this, speak up. Thank you. I, I'm Dave Dahl. I'm your police chief. And first of all, I want to acknowledge uh, just the cooperation we've been getting from Doug and the rest of the Homes Now folks. We really very much appreciate that. Mm -hmm. uh, normally, I would not comment on active investigations as, as this is one, but we think it's very prudent that they limit any further residents until we complete this very thorough investigation. And I believe that this will be accomplished by the end of the month. We've also asked them to address some of the very obvious concerns that came out on the initial complaint to include uh, generating some policies regarding um, sexual harassment, uh, policies on their, their fiscal operation, and uh, ensuring that they have a good quality board that can, that can have some oversight over that program. Uh, Rick and I do, Rick, uh, Planning Director Suppler and I, and uh, Planner Lisa Poole do meet regularly with them, trying to support them as best we can through this, uh, through this difficult time. I think that summarizes it fairly well. Um, you know, I think Doug's done a laudable job of regrouping the organization um, and trying to overcome the issues that have come on. However, we can't ignore what happened. Um, we just can't say that uh, was a bump in the road and we're just able to continue. Organizations need to be able to uh, address the issues that have occurred into the future. And we think um, with appropriate help, they can. Um, we're hopeful that um, working together, we could address the issues and talk about how they can proceed uh, to provide their service to the community and the organization could be stronger. But I do agree with the chief. Um, uh, while the, the uh, investigation is pending, um, there are unanswered questions 
and assertions that are being made, um, this could put finality to those. And I think we need to have those answers before we move forward. Cosmer Lilliquist. I guess I'm um, gonna I guess slightly disagree with the idea that the investigation needs to be complete, or maybe we don't disagree, because I'd like to understand what you mean by complete enough. It seems to me that we need to make sure that there is organizational accountability, and there wasn't quite enough of that, but there, it's moving in that direction. There needs to be procedural safeguards. Those need to be implemented first. Uh, there needs to be identification of key reforms that are needed. None of those depend essentially on identifying precisely the what what a legal investigation needs to determine. So it seems to me that like a significant part of the investigation needs to be completed to identify how it could happen, but I don't think it means every aspect of the investigation, at least I hope it doesn't mean it, because that legal procedure could go on more than just the two weeks. Well, we don't even understand the scope of the of the uh, theft at this point in time. And the scope of the theft might very well impact the future of the Homes Now organization. So we think it's very prudent not to add any more residents at this time until we complete precisely what we know. What we don't know, I investigate what we don't know to make that decision. Okay. <clears throat> Councilmember Vargas. Um, yeah, I'm wondering if we could also address the extension and um, how we have made an agreement for temporary encampments and the agreements that we've made for the neighborhoods. And I'm wondering if we could address that. I can. Um, this was uh, acknowledged from the very first part. Um, when this permit was proposed, um, there was a full year. Uh, at the very first meeting, we said it's time to look for another location, your subsequent location. Um, in subsequent discussions, as recently as a month ago, we said we'd be happy to approve the longest term at another location. Um, I think it was clearly understood. Um, it, it's important to note, uh, we haven't even achieved a full year of working with this organization. We, we, you know, When folks talk about track record, um, each time we've given a permit, we've extended it incrementally, building confidence as things go forward. Uh, clearly, this issue that's before us now is a very upsetting issue in terms of that confidence. Nonetheless, I do think with uh, appropriate reforms, appropriate policies, a stronger board that's better connected to the community, um, there is a likelihood that all that is good in what Hose Down does can continue. Um, I would say that uh, we made disclosure to the neighborhood. Um, I'm sure council's seen the letters saying um, you agreed not to extend that location. You said that at all your public meetings. We'd be less than truthful now to renege on that agreement. It's been clear since the day we signed the papers. Um, I understand the circumstances. Um, in this case, we'll work closely with the proponents to try to find a location for them. And uh, in terms of the permitting function we do, should it be in the city. Okay. Mayor, can you con continue with your report, please? Yes. Um, I can't smell anything. Like Someone else smell a burning smell? Yeah. Like what? Do, is our fire chief here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, chief? Somebody. Yeah. <laughs> that can see. Okay. Thank okay. You. If someone sees flames or smoke, could they let us know? Because I have. I'm looking at you and I see nothing. <laughs> Um, I think the other thing that we need to be aware of it, at least I'm, I'm very aware of it, is that we have, at, we were doing a pilot, we were asking for one of our other partners to step up, especially the county. So that's still a question, an open question that I ask probably every other Friday about whether or not we found another location. Now, I realize that this isn't like this isn't like moving um, tents. I mean, these are much more difficult to move. And so that adds a different dimension to this. But um, I think with Rick saying that if all the, the points are made, then they might have a, a longer term to leave something there. Or if they get a location where they say it's permanent, then you know things can change. There are flexible regulations that way. But I do agree with Rick that we 
promised when we moved this forward with support from the neighbors that this was the duration. I think that probably was part of the acceptance of having a, a, a larger community move in down in that part of the neighborhood. So, um, but we still can talk. We always can talk about, about it. Um, I had the pleasure of having uh, dinner with the general counsel from uh, Canada, Lair, uh, uh, Will and I, on Saturday night, and it was very interesting to hear his perspective of what's going on in our country, though I'll, that's as much as I'll share. Um, he, also, he, he also invited me to go to a, a documentary, it's Doc, it's October, October, yeah, and it was a very interesting one. It was made in Canada, and it had to do with the uh, an, an epic uh, called the Anthropo. I can't remember. Anyway, it had to do with the humans affecting, like the Ice Age and the this and this. This was human uh, humans affecting. Um, our climate, etc., and it, it was a very different perspective, and it was actually very good. So, if it's still around, I say you should all go see it. I also got to read the the uh, proclamation for the Buddy Walk, and I don't know how many of you are, are 